Jason and Blaine. It is fun to have y'all here with me. And on behalf of Discus and Responsibility.org, uh, we're so excited to have y'all in the industry and excited to talk about Meili Baca. So let's start it off with a toast. Let's start it off with a toast, right? Let's get the party started, right? So, a little bit, a little bit. Always be guided by moderation, of course. First and foremost, welcome to the industry. Cheers. Welcome to Mei Lee Baca. Thank you very much. It's Sounds on the planet. Exciting. It's on the planet. Okay, first and foremost, you, you guys been buddies for a while, right? Tell us about the journey. I mean, it's it's like a, it's you know, this is one of the loves of my life. It's 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 rare that you get a. He's you know, a brother. It's not just that. I mean, you can have a brother and not really like him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have one, but. Uh, you can be blood and not get along. The truth of it is, I think we're, uh, we uh, admire, uh, inspire, and look up, and we, we basically just like kind of fuel each other's uh, artistic passions. And I feel like it's a, it's a wonderful support system, and we also just love each other's art forms, and, uh, and we build stuff together. And so that's a rare thing, is when you can actually be two extremely creative alpha males, and, and you know, we're two badass lions in the same place going like, bro, we're having a ball. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Come on, Blaine. Come on, Blaine. Yeah. Like there's that, like, there's that incredibly powerful tension that like some people, you know, that works for some people, some doesn't. And I sure. think that's the, that's the beautiful part of us is that tension for us works, you know? How long have y'all known each other? You, know, you have a good friendship. <sighs> it's gotta be like 11 years. Yeah, I was like, probably. I was say 12, but yeah, somewhere in there, 11, 12 years. And I met through my uh, through my my partner, where she was. Um, she brought Lenny over, right? Lenny brought her over. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah, brought her over, and then she freaked out and was like, "Oh my God, Jason's gonna lose it!" And then, and, and secretly, I had bought a pair of shoes. I just was blown away at this store okay. that he. Well, I, I didn't. It wasn't at his store. It was at this other place. You didn't know yet. The yeah, I didn't know this company made warm, but it came this beautiful bot. The, the whole presentation of it, which is I got like no one was doing the, the full presentation, the customization, the and and it was the one off of it all, and it was just like luxury one off, but like hobo she like it just had its own style. It felt like it was like from the Great Depression, but it fit me. And it looked, and I was like, what is this made out of? And it just blew my mind, the whole presentation. Turns out, then it was him. No, he, so he rolls <clears throat> into my shop, like, the next day. You know, Lilikoy brought, he showed up, and it was like, fuck, he's like, wearing my shoes. You know, it was like, it was wild. So it was just, yeah, was she, she was like, she knew that we were gonna, like, she just like sort of knew, you know? And it, yeah. But then it was freakishly, like, you meet your, you're, when you're a little kid and you meet your best friend, you're like, you want to stay at my house? You want to stay at my house? What do you like to eat? Go. What do you want to say? And so we were just like instantly yeah, so like, like that movie Step Brothers when the two of those. Oh, dude, totally. Got it right. They're like, are we best friends? Yeah. Like, no, sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. So tell me, hundred percent sustainability. Mainly Baca's. It's that's the commitment. So tell me about that. Why? How, why is that the foundation, the essence of this great spirit? I mean, listen, son. Of, the beauty is some of it just came naturally, you know, it's like through the process, when we started, water was the whole premise. Yep. It was like, how do we find the purest water source? Like I, you know, there, it was a time when I was like, I was obsessed with like the world of what moonshine looked like. This yep. ability to like, cause they were always going out looking for water and it, it like, there was the, the popcorn who had like at one point had stated like there was a specific water that he always looked for and he's like if the water's not good the liquor's not good so it like stuck with me but for whatever relevance that was so when we started to like go and look for water we started talking to like different distillers trying to figure out like what it was they were always like the water doesn't really matter and i was just like vodka is 60 percent water how can it not matter you know and i was like and you realize that like, it's because everyone's just using RO water. They're using still water, water. Sure. It's, it's, it's already been, it, everything, all the life of the water is taken out of it, you know? Anybody who's tasted a bunch of different waters knows water, every water tastes different. There's a yep. reason people go and buy a specific water, you know? A lot of that's tainted by the vessel it's in, blah, blah, blah. No doubt. But regardless, water tastes different. So we wanted to like, build something off of what the, the, the pure aspect of the water 
Monta Montana, Montana water. Montana water. Yep. But at the time we didn't, you know, we didn't know that it was going to be Montana. So we, you know, we set off like all over the world looking for the purest water source. Purist. And my dad happened to be like, you know, there's this water source here in Montana where I grew up. And he's like, it's supposed to be one of the, the purest, things. you know, and I'm like, sure, dad. like, sure, you know, I, like, sure, dad, sure, sure, dad. You know, I know yeah. the water great there, but I was just like, we're looking for this other unicorn. And it happened to be that unicorn. He got you to go check it out. The EPA is like, there's a couple waters that the EPA deems worthy of being consumed without any filtration. This that is awesome. one of them. So it's a 300 million year old aquifer that comes up through a limestone shelf. And we're able to basically use that water in its living state. And so it's in y'all's video. Have you been there? Yeah. Been it's, there? I've never yeah. seen anything it's like, like it's, it. It's in like, you know, it's in my, like my backyard, basically where I grew up, you know? So being able to use that water and all the like minerals in that, you know, and then being able to, you know, and then our grains from the same place, it all works. So anyway, back to the sustainability part, that was like the, the, the beginning premises of that was a super small footprint. Yeah. Because where the water comes from, I want, we wanted the grains like from the same, so the, they had that, the unity together. Cause to me, it was like, if they're growing together, they have to be, they, they must like each other. You know? No doubt. So that was the beginning pieces of the sustainability part was the, it was a small carbon footprint. How can we like do this? And I also like to have like the, in the process, being able to like oversee like what it all looks like. So having it all contained, it allows you to like, okay, the grants are coming from here. We're driving them 10 minutes to here. Like, yeah. It's just, it's easy to make sure that the quality, the quality's, it's so, it's so clear and clean because it's like it's you're literally like from here to here you know exactly where it's coming from we're picking it from our grains are hand-picked you know they're, they're coming from a specific bin it's just like we it's it just makes the checks and balances of that absolutely really and then came the glass which was the, the big sustainability beautiful yeah so, you know seven years ago like we went met with a glass blower back east Cut down a cherry tree, which I didn't even realize was part of the old school process. And he carves the he carves our bottle out of the cherry tree and creates the mold. Check that so out. He blows, you know, the first 50 bottles we ever made for Melee were blown out of a cherry tree mold, which I still have in our space. Yeah. But you know, you're like, okay, now we've just set this parameter of like how the hell are we gonna like recreate this on a large scale, you know. So, you know, seven years of trying to find that partnership. When did y'all come up with the name Melee? He brought it to me about, I mean, it's gotta two be like ago. two years ago. Two years ago. <laughs> no, it was before yeah, the yeah. pandemic, so. Four years ago. Four years ago, probably. So Blaine, you landed on it first, sold it to the big guy, right? Yes, I got this word, it sounds it sounds Hawaiian. Yep. I'm Norwegian. Yeah. So it's it's a Nordic Nordic word, but it doesn't sound Nordic at all. Yeah. So Meli is the god of is the is the son of Odin. So he's the god of travel, the mile stepper. But in most cultures, Mele actually means the beautiful one and the lovely one. Yeah. So it had a really nice sort of masculine, feminine sort of feel. Combination of both. That's a good way to look and at it. And it sounded Hawaiian, so I was like, it, and, a well, Mele, fit, and a Mele fit, martini. Fit. It just sounds nice. Rolls off the tongue, right? Off Rolls off the tongue. So that was, yeah, that was it. No. Nope. So fun. How much fun are y'all having? with this product. I mean, anything that I we create together, like just for instance, he came in, I hadn't seen him in a while, and I instantly went, brother, there's this, there's, you know, his son loves Minecraft. And I'm like, well, dude, we're gonna- My like, boys do too. So I'm like, I, I was talking about the outfit and I've seen his thing and we just start piecing things together. And I, he, he's done every outfit I've been in, like in most of the shows that I've been in from Justice League to everything. And so like, it's really wonderful creatively, just on small things to something now it's finally ours. You know, it's not something that we're doing. Proud. Like, it's just our baby. That's it. Uh -huh. and it. And the best part about it is when you get into sustainability, you get into the water. Obviously, I'm freaking Aquaman. Obviously, I'm a huge That's activist it. in the same way. That's it. it reflects design, taste, sustainability side. It's Ooh, all, but are. it's just, it's, it's at us. And then the most important thing we wanted to do was make something that's luxury, like he always does, but affordable and be able to make that so everyone can be proud of it. <clears throat> because the companies I shoot and direct for, like Harley or Carhartt or Leica, and you know, these companies that are just like some massive American companies that, you know I mean? The Carhartt built the Levi building, you know what I mean? Like, so 
things that have been around so long, he's been with me. And so that kind of pride we want for our people that drank it and go like, dude, this is it. What a wonderful present. Look how beautiful it is. Anyone we ask, it's like, that's gotta be 60 Package. bucks. That's gotta be. And you go like, no, it's affordable. It's beautiful. The bottles, I mean, that's what you want to feel when you have something. You want it to be like this unattainable thing. So we want it to be, it really reflects our friendship, the things that we love and the things that we work hard for, so. That's awesome. How did y'all come up with the, so it came from a cherry tree? Came from a cherry, well, initially got carved. So we started out, it was actually a canteen. And the, the, the beautiful the, green green Tell them the canteen idea, because yeah, we're yeah. gonna be coming out with this. It's really yeah. important too, because I mean, the canteen was so like- So we started, it was all, it was based off this idea of a drink from the same canteen. So mm -hmm. like Civil War slogan, I think. And um, so this idea of the camaraderie, you know, it's like, like we're doing here, like sitting around, yeah. talking with friends. Just hanging. Like that, that, that whole thing. So that was, Really where it started. So we started off with that canteen, and then it, you know it's like as it's evolved, you know, as we've gone to this. And the canteen will, will, you know, as we as we along, will become an integral piece of telling the sort of story as like in a, the best way is kind of like a library of like yeah. all the places we've gone. So here's the coolest part about this. When we were talking about it, we we're talking about you know like Kerouac and Bukowski and all these things that we love and just like. I mean, both of my companies are pride of gypsies and on their own. So I'm like, I'm a vagabond at heart, so is he. And so it's like, it's all, all these things that we love and we're talking about, but then we start going, you know, he's like, well, we get water from, from this place and that place and we can mix it with our mash. It can be this and this and this. And then I'm like, oh my God. And then it, it bursts this whole other thing where I'm like, you gotta check out my friend Renan. Like him and his lady are just, they're, they're, uh, they're like the best at documenting and going out there into the world and like capturing in their expedition studios. So. Sure. I'm like, you gotta talk to them. And then now it's like Renan's on and, and Antarctica on top of something. And he's in, you know, uh, doing the Shackleton route and like being able to bring water back from there and we're, us going to harvest ice in Montana. But imagine going on an expedition and you get to bring that, the, the purities of water, like just knowing like how to be able to show the most important thing on earth, the reason why we're here, water. the number one water. reason why water. we're water. here and show what's happening with our planet, how important it is at the same time, bring that back and the reason why this tastes so good is because it's life and it's alive water. It's not dead water, it's alive and we're mixing it with our mash and then we have the library of what you did. So you say you bring back, like we brought back that ice and it made like 60 bottles, didn't it? It packaged, we brought back huge pieces of ice and two big gigantic like Yeti bags. Just like packed them out on our back. Packed them out on our back, then we mixed it with our mash and then you have custom frozen ice from this one spot or you're like, I'm in Antarctica, this could be glacier, whatever, mix it. And go, and then you're gonna be able to have that library, give it to your friends, go to this, and we're gonna make like specialty pieces. So one day it'll be wonderful to have like a library of like, you want, you want a little Everest vodka? Well, everybody's like, dude, I'm drinking Everest. You know what I mean? Like just being able to have something that's so rare. Damn straight. It's and so it all hard. starts with water. But then the, the storytelling yeah, so aspect the of it. Yeah. yeah. We're like, you know, ours is gonna be about water. About that's the awesome. Source of where it comes. But then the stories we get to tell, and that's like the sustainability, getting into the environmental aspect, the, the activism of it, like showing the world. And, and it's just, you're not just promoting this, you get to promote the, the rare water source. So everybody just know, mainly Bach is on the point, leading the effort for water sustainability, and more and than glass. that, and glass, and the purity of water. Yeah. And what that's what that's what life's all about, right, Jason? Yeah, absolutely. That's what it's all about. Okay, so y'all come from diverse backgrounds. You kind of hit on this earlier. Famous actor, famous designer, and y'all are like brothers from a different mother, but get along maybe a little bit, right? I mean, how does that creative, all of those creative juices, does it clash or does it come out and y'all just roll with it? Obviously yeah. it works. The right. scariest thing is like never in all of our time together have we ever clashed on anything? On that's anything. Awesome. It's fucking crazy. That's Sorry, awesome. pardon my French, but it is absolutely insane. Creatively wise, yeah, it's been. It's it's just like uh, I don't have anyone out there yeah. that feels that way. I have one partner that that I shoot with that I feel that way with, but I guess. But it's like that this other. I don't build things like this with anyone else where you're just gonna go like, oh my God, I'm in total great hands where I'm like, we can talk about something, Blaine takes it to the next level. Or if I come in and I wanna shoot something in my commercial, it gets him fucking jazzed up. Like I come to you and go like, bro, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. And he's like, boom, That's we funny. get to go do that. We're gonna do this for Harley, we're gonna do this with Car. And so we kind of just really. And the foundation of you two fellas is trust, right? Y'all oh, got each, each other's back, yeah. right? 
Yeah. Uh, responsibility. I mean, y'all, y'all are fairly new to the industry, but you recognize the important role that responsibility comes with when uh, we're talking about beverage alcohol, right? Could you just talk a little bit about that and the importance of responsibility? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, I mean, it's it, it's one of those things where with anything, you know, I think learning to understand like creatively, like learning to understand all those different boundaries and learning how to enjoy it, but enjoy it in, in, in understanding. And I think most of it, the, the biggest part to me is, is respecting what it is. Yeah. Respecting the process of what we're doing, respecting the, the, the reality of like, you know, drinking is a personal thing, but it has an incredible ability to also have an outreach if you are not. No doubt about it. So I think it's one of those things where you have to always think beyond just your 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 moment and what what impact that has on everything else. So I think it's it's amazing when you have a group of fans and everyone is enjoying that moment. But at the end of the day, it's your gotta look after each other, yours, right? You have to look after everyone that's there, and it's your personal actions that are what you have to take responsibility for. Because at the end of the day, it is that it is that. It it's that. Your, your choice to, to make sure that your friends are okay or you're okay or all of that it's it's a it's a personal it, it, it is that and I think that is what you know people have to embrace and, and, and understand the importance of that and like the foundation of the brand is a commitment to responsibility to the environment right i mean that's the foundation of it and then it comes with people enjoying the great product having fun but getting home safe as well right absolutely yeah so so fun. It's doing it right. It's, it's doing, doing it right. right the first time. A hundred percent. Every time after that. You know? So I think that's that's the biggest thing. Blaine, you've had a long history of being a disruptor, and Jason, prime time, right? So both of y'all, <laughs> what is this product going to do to disrupt this great industry? <laughs> it's fun, right? I, yeah. I mean, to me, it just comes down to like a little equation, a little mathematical equation, like. If it looks good, and it, and it tastes, tastes good, amazing. I can tell you it tastes, that. It I'm tastes drinking amazing. it neat. Well, that's the best part. Yeah. Because we always went out it like this. We are just artists. I don't think of myself as a celebrity. I don't want to brand it as a celebrity thing. This is just stuff that we love, and we wanted to tackle this. Truth is, I mean, I love scotch. I love mezcal. I love all these drinks. I love gin. There's these other things that I love. I'm not trying to fix the wheel. That thing was broken. I find it not, I, I don't think there's any vodka that I could drink straight that I actually enjoy that we can sit down and drink it warm. I can pull out of my backpack on a hiking trail, be out in the mountains for a week on a trail and be able to have one bottle and be able to just have a little nip here and a little nip there and go like, wow, that's wonderful. And we wanted to make something like that. And then when you mix it, great, it's only gonna taste better. So our job is just to make a great product that looks amazing and it's affordable and you can be proud of it. It looks beautiful, it's gonna stand out and that's what we set out to do. And I don't feel like there's something out there that makes me feel that way. So that's why maybe we're disrupting it, but I'm just trying to, we're trying to give something that I think people deserve, what I deserve, what I want. We want to make it for five, ourselves. Five. We want to sit on the porch and drink this and go like, how cool is it to be able to go like, yeah, I'm just drinking vodka straight. I'm like, who does that? You know? I can tell you, I can attest to it. It works. It's smooth, smooth. Smooth. Blaine? I mean, listen, I, I've been, you know, uh, a lot of our passions, we love the process. So, you know, this was, an obsession of process. Like every single aspect and detail has been like refined, refined, refined. I think from a sustainability standpoint and the and the way that we can change the way people see the simplicity of what and the beauty of what sustainability can be, I think will also I think is a huge impact. You know, I think it goes back to like the ones distilled to me, anything more, anybody who's distilling more of that, it's because the, the shit sucked to begin with. All distilling is doing is distilling more of the shit out. Like, yeah. Like if you can't do it right, then don't, don't goddamn do it. Like we are proud of the, 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 the grains that we chose, the water we chose. We distilled it once because it was right. From the Spot beginning. on. We tell people to sip it warm, which is, would be. Who does that? Not, you know. I'm doing it. I know. I'm doing, doing it. it. And the, no one does that. Yeah. So for me, like that's that statement from a sustainability standpoint, the, the fact that we can tell it to where 
everybody can understand like the simplicity of it. Like here's a bunch of broken glass. We're going through and sorting out the greens, the blues, the whites, the clears, all these different it's colors. Beautiful packaging. Putting it in a furnace and being able to bring at 100% capacity all of that glass back to life. So it's just like, it's, it's, it's a constant ability to like reimagine that. And it's, when you look at it in that simple form, I think it's just easier for people. It's like, you know, everyone goes out and they throw stuff in their blue trash cans, but they don't even understand what it's, what it's doing. Yeah. Nobody, nobody shows that. It's not, it's not yeah. pretty, you know, I mean, it's like, it's all going to somewhere else. Like we don't even have the capability. So it's like being able to show how simple it can be done, you know? And like, no doubt. Even back to like the old days of like the beauty of like, you put your milk, milk mm -hmm. like, we could do it then and here we are. Have you the like, lever? Ma, yeah, and they come and pick your glass yeah, back up. Yeah. Like, how did we end up so like- Far off that. Far off with supposedly this like, ever growing globally. This isn't just like, this This is globally everyone's totally. story. Totally, so totally. I think, I think there's a lot of different ways to look at it. At the end of the day, we wanted to have a beautiful, sustainable package to be able to house this. You can have the most beautiful thing on the shelf, but if someone picks it up and what's inside doesn't taste good. It's all irrelevant. No doubt about so it. So it was trying to put something where it, like, it encapsulated all of it. If I may just give a quick plug on Discus, but it really starts with the essence of our members. We just got awarded by the Environmental Protection Agency an award for our commitment to sustainability where we partnered with them to energy store all the distilleries around the country. And it's the essence of what y'all are doing. Right, it's really on behalf of all of our members, and Maley is leading the way to do that. Okay, y'all are blowing it up in Hawaii, blowing it up in California. What's next for the What's next for the brand? It's coming. It's coming, right? It's coming. Yeah. Got your man Kevin Cook, who is an industry icon. Uh, how How y'all gonna get the product out across the country? Yeah, so we're you know we 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 have chosen strategically sort of where we're going so we can always make sure that as we as we grow we're able to bring everybody that the, the 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 quality and the level of what we're doing you know so that that is that is been ingrained since day one like let's make sure that like everybody who gets this gets the same experience and like he's saying uh, jason saying a, a big part of what we want to do we wanted this to be at a price point where everybody can enjoy it no doubt so in that seeing the package and knowing what we're doing it was incredibly complicated to get to that point yep. where we could do it. We're, we're at that point now. So now we have this ability to be able to actually share it out. So we're doing it very carefully. We're doing it on our, in on in our, our terms. terms. That's it. Like the way that like. Doing it the right way. To the places that we that we can touch and, and, and do it. So yeah, it's now, incredibly exciting. Drinking it neat is easy. I can tell you that right now. Is there any particular cocktail that y'all would prefer? Jason, I think you just like it with, on the rocks. No, I normally don't have it on the rocks, but I tried it out. Normally traveling. I drink it straight. Yeah, I normally tried it straight and warm, but uh, I we came up with one uh, and actually uh, we were in California and who was the people that made, they, they made the menu? Filthy Momoa? Who made oh, yeah. that? Oh, Filthy, Filthy Momoa. Momoa. At, uh, That's at good. Wally's. At Wally's. So I show up at Wally's and they have a menu that says, because they know, I mean like, my, my favorite would be a martini or a Bloody Mary. But I'm like, there's the Bloody Momoa and there's the Filthy Momoa. And I was dying laughing because I just love like tons of olive juice in there. And uh, yeah, it was amazing. So we made a Filthy Momoa martini and- uh, That's cool. Yeah. Well, y'all are just learning about Discus because you're kind of new into the industry, but Discus is experiencing its 50th year anniversary. Discus has been on point and just trying to modernize the marketplace, always be guided by social responsibility. And I can tell you, on behalf of the Distilled Spirits Council of the United States and responsibility.org, welcome to the industry. Y'all are leading the way on the side of right, on the side of sustainability, water sustainability, purity, and all of the above. And we are excited to have you and just triple cheers. And y'all, let me tell you, I'm sitting here with some big stars. These guys are the real deal and just nice, nice people. Thanks. Cheers. 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 That was wonderful. Thank you. Thank awesome. you. Yeah.